Farnes, do it slow. Ah, uh, hello, folks. I'm Amos. There's sure some excitement around the Kingfisher's house today, ain't there? And I guess you're wondering what it's all about. Well, it started about three days ago when the Kingfisher's wife, Sapphire, decided to do some cleaning. And the looks of you, I thought you were going to ride the thing. <laughs> I don't want no comments from the likes of you. And now that you're home, you can take all this junk down to the furnace and burn it. Understand? All right, all right. Did ever I wear something like this? <laughs> this is the worst hunk of junk I ever seen. <laughs> Money couldn't buy a finer garment, Andy. <laughs> yes, honey, it fits you like a glove. <laughs> and it's yours for 32 bucks. Well, I agree with you that it comes from England and it's Harrisburg Tweed and everything, but uh, I just don't want this thing, King. <laughs> You're passing up a good buy there, son. Ever go in for tennis? No. <laughs> hey, there's something in the pocket here, Kingfish. Yeah? Ooh, look like a pawn ticket. <laughs> yeah, I remember that ticket. I had a bad year in 32 and I had to pawn my bridge. I tell you, Andy, it's an awful feeling to pass by the pawn shop and see your own teeth grinning at you from behind the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what's that, Andy? It looked like a toad and two there. Yeah, they're advertising something. It says here, call Lehigh 49900 for the best in town. No charge. The rest of it's off there. Mm-hmm. That sounds like something the old kingfish ought to get in on. Yeah, after all, it's free. And whatever it is, it's giving it away all gratin. <laughs> uh, maybe you better tell them you want three or four of them best in towns. Uh, hello? Are you the people that's advertising you got the best in town? Why, yes, sir. That is our slogan. Well, look, miss, I've seen your ad and I'm interested. Now, these best in towns that you got over there, they're the good-sized best in towns, ain't they? Because I don't want no skippy ones. Well, I guess you could say we have all sizes. <laughs> you know how it is. Well, I just wanted to make sure, oh, uh, whatever they is, Andy, they come in all sizes. Yeah. If they shoes, find out if they got in a size 14 and a half. Oh, uh, what's that? I said I'm sorry, but Mr. Cunningham, who is in charge of our office, is out right now. Why don't you leave your name and number, and I'll have him call you back and give you all the information. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Tell him I'm very interested. The name is George Stevens. S-T-E-V-E-N-S. I is the well-known big shot from over here at the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. And the number is Atwater 93597. I'll have Mr. Cunningham call you just as soon as he gets back. Thank you. The man's gonna call us back, Andy. He must be out to lunch or something. Yeah. How about me and you getting some lunch? My stomach is so hungry it's stabbing at my liver. <laughs> yeah, good idea, son. Let's go over to the bean ring. Miss Stevens. Yes, yes, what is it like this? Uh, you can't go in there and talk to the king, see? And just why not? Because he ain't in there. Well, where is he? Uh, <laughs> him and Mr. Brown went to get something to eat about 10 minutes ago. Well, this is a fine thing. I 
I've got lots of work for him at home, and he's out running around with that bum, Andy Brown. I'm going in and leave him alone. I'm sick and tired of the way he acts. Every time there's something to do around the house, he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> All the late, no good loafers. 22 years and he ain't raised a hand to help me. Hello? Hello? Hello, this is Mr. Cunningham. I'm trying to reach a Mr. Uh, George Stevens. He called a short while ago. Well, he ain't here right now. Is there any message? What? <laughs> I said this is the Cunningham's Lonely Heart Club. Mr. Stevens called and said he was very interested in our service. As a matter of fact, my girl said he was quite excited about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> what was that? I was just wondering if you could tell me what kind of a girl Mr. Stevens would prefer. <laughs> giving away something free. John Stevens, you're just wasting your breath. I don't believe a word of it. Uh, there it is, honey, right there. I swear to you, I'll tell you the truth, I swear it. See there, honey? All that say on there is the best in town. I thought they was giving away something free. George, is you sure you're telling me the truth? Why, well, of course, honey. You don't think for the world that I'd go to a Lonely Hearts Club, would you? Well... Of course not, dear. If I want to be lonely, I don't have to go to no club. I got you. <laughs> you know I ain't never been interested in no other woman's. All right, George, I guess you're telling the truth. But let me warn you, if I ever catch you so much as looking at another woman, it'll be the last thing you ever do. Yes, dear, yes, dear. Now, as long as you're home here, you can help me with the cleaning. Yes, dear, yes, dear. Here's the address. Let me know how you make out but I'm sure that I have found a very nice young man for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Are you sure you have everything right? Oh, yes. I'm supposed to look up a Mr. George Stevens at the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. That is right. Yes, I'm looking for a Mr. George Stevens. I said I was looking for a Mr. George Stevens. Oh, uh, you mean him. Uh, he ain't down yet. Uh, this morning, but you can wait in the office if you kiss. Well, thank you. <laughs> morning, Good morning. Good morning. English down the lodge yet? Uh, uh, no, sir, but there's somebody waiting in there to see him. I'll talk to the fellow. over here by Mr. Cunningham. Well, I don't know who you is, but I'd sure like to thank Mr. Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mr. Cunningham from the Lonely Hearts Club. Uh-oh. So this is what they meant by the best in town. <laughs> they wasn't kidding, was they? Uh, but tell me something. What is a beautiful gal like you doing messing around with a Lonely Hearts Club? Well, you see, my name is Carlotta Drake, and I just moved into town, and I didn't know anyone here, and I thought that through Mr. Cunningham's club, I might get a chance to meet some cultured and refined gentlemen. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you see, I've been, well, so very lonesome since I've been in town. 
Yeah. Well, it's been awfully nice talking to you like this, but I'm looking for Mr. George Stevens. Could you tell me where I could find him? Can I tell you where you can find him? Ha! 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 Shake hands with Georgie, boy. You're George Stevens? Now, you sit right here and tell me all about yourself. <laughs> you see, I happen to be free this evening, and I figured that you and me could sort of step out a little bit. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Uh, is that a little closer, honey? Like this? Yeah. You know, honey, I figured that you and me gonna have ourselves a world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, dear. And when you finish with that, I want you to wash down the bedroom walls. Then you can wax the living room floors and wash the windows inside and out. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Oh, and another thing. I still got my eye on you. If I ever catches you interested in any hussies, I'll lonely heart you. Now, honey, I'll tell you now like I told you before. George Stevens is one man who ain't gonna get messed up with no woman's. <laughs> My dear, I don't know when I've been so rushed. All the young people are going to that dance tonight, and they just must have their hair done. <laughs> <laughs> nice day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Are you going to the dance tonight? Dance? Me? <laughs> My husband hasn't taken me out dancing in years. By the way, I haven't seen you around before. Oh, no. I'm new in town, but I've been so lucky. I met the most attractive single man. He's so nice to me. I'm going to the dance with him tonight. Well, you're very lucky, my dear, because you just can't trust the men these days. Well, this one's different. He's such a dreamboat. I've never met a man quite like George before. <laughs> You say his name is George? That's right. I hate to admit it, but I met him through a Lonely Hearts Club. <laughs> no, no, no. I just had the craziest notion, though. I wonder if you'd mind my asking. That is, I mean, well, I hope you don't think I'm silly, but... <laughs> but this single attractive dreamboat you met, does his last name happen to be Stevens? That's right, George Stevens. Do you know him? Well, slightly. But I'm certainly looking forward to our next meeting. Good day. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Benjamin. Thank you very much. Now, Mrs. Stevens, don't you worry about a thing. You just leave all the details to me, and I assure you that the proper action will be taken. Oh, thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get on home. It's after 11 o'clock. There ain't no sense in doing nothing to upset the old rattle axe. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come on. Uh, 
Honey, I'm at home. See you in court, bud. <laughs> and in view of the facts as presented here, I hereby declare that a legal separation exists between Sapphire Stevens and her husband, George, and that the community property jointly owned by both parties be equally divided. Yes, Mrs. Stevens is in with Mr. Prescott now. They're working out a property settlement. Yes, Mr. Stevens is in there too. They're waiting for his attorney, somebody named Algonquin J. Calhoun. I never heard of him. Yes, I'll let you know. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. You can't go in there. My good woman, I happen to be Algonquin J. Calhoun. Don't you shout at me! And don't you shout at me, Miss Big Mouth. Sorry, I'm late. But don't you worry about a thing, Kingfish. I'll twist this bone Prescott around my little finger. Yeah, who? You done got Mr. Prescott. I hear. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't know I was talking to the wrong bum. Well, come on, come on. Let's get going. We ain't got all day, you know. Mr. Calhoun? Yep. As attorney for Mr. Stevens, I take it that you're prepared to represent him in this property settlement? Is I prepared? Counselor, I am prepared to meet you as lawyer to lawyer and repudiate every one of your legal arguments point for point. Fine, fine. But before we proceed, may I suggest uh, no low contendere or judicium? No, never touch it up when I'm working. <laughs> Come on, let's get going here. Now, First on the list of community properties, silverware. Twelve forks, six knives, one dozen teaspoons. That silverware belonged to me. It does not. It does, too. It's a family heirloom. That silverware has been in my family ever since my father was a busboy at Diaster. <laughs> we'll concede the silverware. We got them on the run, Kingfish. Next on the list is the linens. Two wit, two chenille bedspreads, Four pillowcases, four blankets, three and a half sheets, and one lace tablecloth. That's the other half of the sheet. That belongs to me. Well, it's customary to accord the linen to the woman. Now for the furniture. Item one, living room suite. I bought that when I worked in a department store. One bedroom set. I bought that when I worked in a doctor's office. One stove and one refrigerator. I bought them when I worked in a defense plant. Ain't you never worked no place you born? <laughs> Item four, two silver candlesticks. Those is yours, honey. I bought them for you on our first wedding anniversary. No, no, George, we give them to each other. You give me one candlestick and I give you the other. Yeah, I remember that. That's when we first come to New York and we went in that big jewelry store. Then after that, we walked up Fifth Avenue. I remember it like it was yesterday. The sun was shining. And we cut through the park at 67th Street. I want you to have them, honey. They mean more to you. No, no, George. I know they mean more to you than they mean to me. No, honey. You are the woman and you got more sentiment than I have. No, George. You take the candlesticks. You have always been more sentimental than I have. No, honey. You have always been the sentimental one of the family. What are you talking about? You are twice as sentimental as I is. Now, looky here. I said you were the sentimental one, and I know what I'm talking about. Don't you talk that way to me, you bum. You ain't never been nothing but a sentimental fool all your life. And don't contradict me again. And when it comes to sentimental fools, you are twice the sentimental fool that I am. You better take them candlesticks if I have to jam them down your throat. <laughs> You're gonna have those candlesticks if it's the last thing I do. Don't you tell me. Shut up. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Oh, 
kingfish, please. There's no use, boys. Food ain't never going to be the same to me no more. Listen, kingfish, you're going to get malignition. <laughs> hey, why don't you let me go to Sapphire and explain the whole thing to her? And you're right, kingfish. You can't go on like this. No, no, boys. After all what done happened, she wouldn't believe me. Circumstances is against me. And then after all, how was I going to explain what I'm doing with this lonely hearts club head in my pocket? Yeah, what in the world would you be doing with a thing like that? I ain't got no idea how that thing got in my old suit. Say, Kingfish, do the number Lehigh 41599 mean anything to you? Lehigh 41599. I can't say. Oh, yeah. That's the number of the hair treatment place I used to go to, Thompson's Hair Emporium. I used to take treatments there. They was all right, too. <laughs> As I was about to say, Andy, uh, Amos, how come you bring up that number? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing, Kingfish. Uh, I'll see you later. I got a little something I want to take care of. Amos, he didn't send you up here with this cock and bull story, did he? Look, Sapphire, Kingfish don't know one thing about this. I done found a number on the back of this card here. Now, Sapphire, you've known me a long time. I wouldn't lie to you, would I? Well, no, Amos, I know you wouldn't. It's just that... Certainly, Sapphire. This is why Kingfish had the card in his pocket. He'd been saving the number of that hair treatment place. But Amos, that girl... Sapphire, it's like I told you, that was Andy's girl. Now... Let me go tell Kingfish to come back home. Cause I know he misses you just as much as you misses him. Well, all right, Amos. I'll give him one more chance. Just one more chance. Well, boys, how I look? Oh, you look great, Kingfish. <laughs> Amos, are you sure that Sapphire want to take me back? Kingfish is all set. And I'm telling you, boy, when you walk in that apartment, she's going to welcome you with wide open arms. You ain't got a thing to be afraid of, boy. Thank you, Amos. Thank you. <laughs> Lehigh 41599. I wonder if Amos was telling the truth. I think I'll call this number just to check and make sure. All finished? Yep, yeah, there's your new number, Lehigh 41599. Oh, incidentally, three years ago, that number used to belong to Thompson's Hair Emporium, but they're out of business. I don't think you'll be bothered. Thanks very much. Right. Lennox Burlesque Theater. Fifi Lamar speaking. say one thing to you men. If you ever find a card in your pocket with a telephone number on the back of it, my advice is not to try to find out what it is. <laughs>